So I think everybody knew that eventually I was going to get to Lonzo on this thing. I am pro Lonzo. The playmaking, the defense, the just general existence making the team better. You look at the Lakers record with him and without him. Sure, I don't think that tells the entire story. Like, not all of that was because of Lonzo, but I think they were just definitely a team that made a lot more sense when he was in the game, right? So now he's on this Pelicans team, and how good's he going to do? Is he going to do good? Is he going to do blah? Let's let's talk about this. Um, I don't know if Lonzo's going to start. You can make a case for him and Drew starting together because of the defense. You can make a case for Drew starting next to JJ for the offense. You could even make a case for Drew and Josh Hart starting. Not that I think that'll happen, but for like the kind of in-between of the defense and the offense, whatever. But I am confident that Lonzo is still going to play probably around 30 minutes a night. Personally, I would start with Drew and Lonzo and then just go from there. But the first thing is like how much shooting is on this team for Lonzo to really be able to make plays to guys and have the spacing because of course he's going to have the ball more without LeBron on his team right you know between JJ who's awesome and Drew whose percentages are not that great but I think teams are still going to respect him uh Josh Hart Darius Miller Etuan Moore although I don't know how much those two are really going to play but I do think there's enough shooting on the perimeter to where Lonzo is going to have guys to kick out to that was of course a problem for the Lakers last season. Granted, Lonzo was part of that problem, but I do think um, I think there's. I will admit, when I first think of this Pelicans team, I don't think of them being an awesome shooting team, mainly because of the front court guys not being the best. But when you really dig into the perimeter talent, I think there's like enough there, at least for Lonzo to have some avenues to pass out to. But of course, teams are still going to dare Ingram, Zion and Derek Favors to make shots. So it's going to be up to Alvin Gentry to manage that. I think Derek Favors is probably this team's starting center because I don't think they're going to start Jackson Hayes or Jaleel Okafor. I mean, Okafor has been here, but I don't know on that one. But then we look at um, like the pick and roll, right, with Lonzo and probably Zion and and Derek Favors. And we'll get to the full court stuff because I think that's going to be a, a big part of this team. But... You know, you got to score in the half-court situations, of course. So, like, is Alonzo going to get a lot of screens from Zion and Favors? Teams are, of course, going to back up on those or try to go under the screen on Alonzo. And I think that's a big reason why his pick-and-roll numbers up to this point in his career have been really bad. Like, he was in the 17th percentile his rookie season, the 22nd last year. I would like to think that with... Zion and Favors being really good screen setters and in the case of Zion being insanely athletic and then with Favors hopefully he's back to the athleticism that he was at pre-injury but he has looked a little slower if we can be honest lately but if those two can be really athletic and Lonzo can be his signature passing self which of course he will be and if he can just like make some floaters then perhaps that could be enough for the Lonzo and whoever pick and roll to be successful. The other thing will be when Drew is creating, because that's, I mean, he's going to be the lead ball handler. Um, you know, I think Lonzo's smart enough to play off of that, and even though he's not an awesome shooter, he can still make something happen out of all that, whether it's attacking immediately on a closeout or seeing where the the right next pass is because that was something he would do for the Lakers where yeah teams would leave him kind of open but then he would be like okay well you're also kind of leaving this other dude open so I'm gonna pass it right to him when LeBron throws it to me I also think Lonzo is smart enough to do what the Sixers would kind of do with Ben Simmons and JJ Redick when teams left him way open which would be Redick comes up In this case, it would be Lonzo hands him the ball off, and then, well, at that point, it's just two-on-one with one of the best shooters in the league. So there's going to be counters for teams leaving Lonzo super open. It's just a matter of Lonzo and Gentry seeing those things. It's also a matter of Lonzo being aggressive enough like to demand these things, because I do think he's been a little too nice up to this point. I mean, the playmaking is awesome, but... 
I want to see if Lonzo is going to notice the way teams are defending him and then a timeout is called and then in the huddle he just kind of says, all right, guys, this is what they're doing. Give me the damn ball because I know how to get us a shot right now. I just, I don't know if he's shown that type of personality up to this point. That also can come out in other areas too, like simply attacking more. And I do think he still has that problem where he's got a layup or he's got a floater or something, and then he passes out at the last moment. So Lonzo definitely has to step on the gas a little bit more. And, you know, it's his third season and whatever else, so I'm optimistic that he will do those things. Now if we talk about defense and the full court, because I think that's going to be a big part of this team. Switchability certainly there. Lonzo can defend multiple positions. Drew can. Zion, we assume, can. Ingram can. And Derek Favors on his best day can as well. So there's a chance this team could be kind of awesome on defense. Now whether Alvin Gentry is really ready to coach up defense like that, I don't know. And also, like, Zion's a rookie, so I don't think we can just assume he's going to be an awesome NBA defender right now. Physically, it's there. Mentally, we don't know. But still, I'm expecting this team to get a lot of stops and hopefully force a lot of turnovers as well. And, I mean, it basically speaks for itself. Like, if Lonzo gets the ball, am I going to be shocked if there's, like, four full-court alley-oops from Lonzo to Zion this season? No, not really. I think that's totally in the cards. If Favors is back to his athletic self, that'll be a thing with Lonzo um, getting a lot of assists that way. Of course, there's going to be like Lonzo to J.J. Redick things all over the place. If Drew is moving off the ball a bit as well, Ingram is a bit of an X factor, and I made a whole video on that one where I could see his role in this team being like seven different things. So I'm not super confident with how often we're going to see Lonzo to Ingram stuff. I mean, we're definitely going to see it. I mean, Ingram has scoring ability, no doubt. It's just I know for a fact we're going to see like... 15 J.J. Redick floppy sets every game for this team, you know? So, as I typically do with these, I guess I can predict a stat line, a season thing for Lonzo. I actually want to see where did his shooting end up last year? Because his percentages have not been as bad as you might think they would be. Like, he's been at, what, 30, 31.5% throughout his career. On more attempts than you would also think for a guy who's not a good shooter you know I, I think a stat line for Lonzo this year can be we'll say about 12 points 8 to 9 assists say about 6.5 rebounds I think he'll be in line for an all defense appearance whether he actually gets it or not I don't know I think there's a case to be made that if he would have played all of last season he could have gotten on there. Again, would have been close, but, you know, maybe. Um, am I expecting the shooting to have some big jump? No. I'm, you know, four or five attempts a game, 32, 33%. If he hit 34, that'd be an accomplishment. But with all this being said, I'm also expecting the advanced numbers, the on-off stuff, to be very nice to Lonzo. I mean, look, take a look at the Lakers' on-off numbers with Lonzo and without him. They got better when he was in the game. Look at their record when he played versus when he hasn't. Ever since they got him, they always were better with him. And the eye test backs all those things up. So until Lonzo proves that he doesn't make a team better, I'm just going to assume that he's going to make the Pelicans better. So there you go. I'm excited. I also think there's a chance he could average like 13 assists a game and lead the NBA in assists. But I just think Drew's going to have the ball a lot. And he should because, you know, Drew's really good. That's it. Um, what's the what's the over under on Lonzo to Zion alley oops? Assuming Lonzo's healthy, it's definitely over one hundred. I think it's fair to say we can expect more than one Lonzo to Zion alley oop a game. So I don't know what would one point five be, assuming they both play like seventy three games. That'd be like one hundred and nine point five. So I guess maybe the over under is like one oh five. I don't know. I'm just trying to stretch this to 10 minutes at this point. I guess I can talk about Lonzo's new tattoo. It's very well done. I'm not a tattoo guy. I don't have any myself. I don't picture myself getting any. But if I can put myself into that world for a second, um, it's a pretty cool tattoo. 
So, shout out to Lonzo, and hopefully his dad isn't that annoying this year.